Hi everybody, this is Lara with your end of the week video for the S&P 500 for the trading week ending Friday 17th of July 2020. I'm expecting some sideways movement to continue next week for the S&P and then it may be followed by a short sharp upward thrust, a little false breakout before a trend change. The upward breakout may end above 3235.32 but I'm not expecting a new all time high for the S&P. The main wave count does remain bearish and it has two final targets which remain the same. I do have an alternate wave count which is bullish. It's expecting that price should be in a third wave at the moment and there's a lot of weakness in upward movement. It just doesn't fit that alternate wave count. But I do have an alternate bullish wave count for members whose own analysis may lean bullish. You may want to follow that as a roadmap for your Elliott wave analysis. So you don't have to agree with my judgment that a bearish wave count is more likely than bullish. If your own analysis is bullish, follow the bullish wave count. And for daily Elliott Wave stock market members, I'm providing an hourly chart for you to do so. At the weekly chart level, this is my main wave count. It expects that the bull market is over and a big three step back pattern is underway for a cycle degree second wave labelled A, B, C, subdividing most likely as a zigzag. It is of course possible that the bear market was over here for the S&P, but it doesn't look like a very obvious three wave structure. And so for this wave count, I wouldn't want to label cycle wave two over here. And that would be a rather shallow and brief second wave correction. It should look like a really obvious three wave structure and B waves and especially the first multi-week bounce within a new bear market is often really deep and convinces us that the bear market is over and it'll do that right before a C wave or a third wave takes off to the downside. That's the purpose of B waves. Primary wave B, if I have A analysed correctly as a five wave structure, may not move beyond the start of A, may not make a new all time high. This breakaway gap here remains open and while it remains open it does seem reasonable to, to err toward or lean toward a bearish wave count. I'm labelling the structure of primary wave B now a double zigzag. We've got a new high very very slightly above this point but still not on a closing basis. This is a rather weak upward movement but I'm expecting a little bit more upward movement before primary wave B is done. When primary wave B may again be complete, then I'll use the ratio between A and C to calculate another target for the next wave down. And at that stage again, we may again have two targets. Let's take a look at the daily chart where this high for cycle one is this point back here. Here's that breakaway gap. It remains open while it remains open. It would still be a breakaway gap and the resulting move may be, expect to, it may be expected to be incomplete. It should offer resistance. The structure of primary wave B is now seen as a double zigzag. It's obviously not over there because we've got a slight new high beyond this point here. So primary B is continuing. Double zigzags are actually pretty common structures, particularly for B waves. The first zigzag in the double is labelled intermediate W. The double is joined by what can only be seen now as a corrective structure in the opposite direction labelled X, even though this looks very much like a five wave structure at all time frames. It will subdivide as a zigzag. This could have been a third wave within a zigzag. And now intermediate Y needs to be seen as a three wave structure, a zigzag subdividing five, three, five. Minor wave B may be a little triangle but it could morph into some kind of combination or flat correction. It may continue to find support around the lower edge of this best fit channel. When minor B is complete, I'll expect a short little wave up for minor C to move slightly beyond the end of A to avoid a truncation to complete the zigzag for intermediate Y, and then I'll be expecting a trend change. The next wave down, if this wave count is correct, should be particularly strong. C waves can behave like third waves. At the alley chart level, here's the end of minor A. Here's a possible triangle for minor wave B, but for those who have been members for a while, you'll know my concern about triangles is that while we think 
a triangle may be unfolding so many times it will be invalidated only for the structure to turn out to morph into a combination or a flat correction or some other corrective structure. The approach for minor wave B next week for you will be on trying to identify when it could be complete rather than trying to figure out what structure is unfolding. At this stage, I don't think it's complete here anymore because to C minor C beginning here, this is just too time consuming. This looks like part of minor wave B. And to C minor B over back here, that was particularly brief. B waves are most commonly more time consuming than that. If it is a triangle, then minute C may not move beyond the end of A. Minute D may not move reasonably above the end of B, and minute E may not move beyond the end of C. And so if C does move below the end of A, a triangle is invalidated, I'll then consider minor wave B as probably a flat correction or maybe a combination. It's entirely possible it may not be a triangle, it could turn out to be something else. So my labelling next week within it will probably change as the structure becomes clearer. I'll expect minor C when it unfolds to move beyond the end of A to avoid a truncation. I'm giving you a couple of confidence points where below which you may have more confidence in a trend change and I need to fix this channel on the hourly chart. At the weekly chart level this is an alternate wave count. If we move the degree of labelling within the whole of the bull market beginning March 2009 up one degree then instead of just cycle wave one within super cycle 5 being complete, super cycle 5 in its entirety could be complete which means we may have seen a trend change at grand super cycle degree in February 2020. That's a once in multi-generations event and a huge bear market may be in its very early stages. Most likely to subdivide as a zigzag 535 labelled super cycle ABC so super cycle A, most likely to subdivide as a five wave structure, most likely an impulse at cycle degree 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 2 may not move beyond the start of 1. When I'm more confident of where 2 has ended, I'll recalculate the target. It won't change very much though. At the daily chart level, this is an alternate wave count. To see the difference between this bullish wave count and the bearish wave counts and how I'm labelling the subdivisions in the bull market, you'll need to view monthly charts. Members have asked, what if this was a fourth wave and what if this was the end of an expanded flat? Well, that's this bullish wave count. You can see it more clearly on the monthly chart. So Elliott wave is fractal. You have to fit it all into the bigger picture. So if you haven't viewed monthly charts, I strongly recommend that you do so. If a fourth wave is over here as an expanded flat, then the C wave of the expanded flat should subdivide as a five wave structure, and that's what this looks like. So all of my wave counts are seeing this big move here as a five wave structure, which is what it fits best as. If that's the case, then a cycle degree fifth wave may have begun here. I expect only primary one is nearing completion. With intermediate one, this looks like a really good five wave structure. Intermediate two, a very obvious three wave structure. Intermediate three, a shorter impulse that's shorter than intermediate wave one. Intermediate four, a little zigzag. There's nice alternation here between the what could be a flat of intermediate two and a zigzag of intermediate four and this all fits really neatly within the channel. It's all very good up to here but now it's just kind of not looking very good anymore because it's breaching the channel and it's lacking strength. Because intermediate 3 is shorter than intermediate 1 that means intermediate 5 is limited to no longer than a quality in length with intermediate 3. Primary 1, if this wave count is correct with 3 and 4 here, needs to end at or prior to this limit. Looking now at the structure of intermediate 5, it may be unfolding as an impulse with minor wave 1, a leading contracting diagonal. Minor 2 could be over here, it would be pretty brief and shallow though. It could be continuing further, it may move lower, but may not move beyond the start of 1. But I'm going to label it over here for this bullish wave count because it really shouldn't be breaking out below this channel. If primary wave 1 is complete, 
in a channel drawn around the ends of the inter ends of the intermediate degree waves should be containing primary wave 1 and that channel should only be breached when primary 1 is over and primary 2 down then begins. So I expect for this idea minor 2 should be over there, which means these three candlesticks are the start of a third wave up and they really are quite pathetic. This is not a normal looking beginning to a third wave. It just so far with the data in hand doesn't support this wave count well at all. But let's as always consider all possibilities. When primary wave 1 may be over then a multi-week pullback for primary 2 should be expected which may not move beyond the start of 1. At the hourly chart here is the end of minor 2 and the start of minor 3. Minute wave 1 within minor 3 may be incomplete 1, 2, 3, 4 and the fifth wave beginning. Again if I draw a channel around this it just doesn't fit. It doesn't have a normal look at the hourly chart level as well but let's consider all possibilities. I've got a series of overlapping first and second waves within a third wave here so this wave count would expect some increase in upward momentum early next week. When minute wave 1 is over then minute 2 may not move beyond its start below the short term invalidation point. This week completes a hanging man candlestick pattern. This is a bearish reversal pattern and it doesn't matter what the colour of the real body is of the hanging man, it's the size of the body in comparison to the long lower wick that creates the pattern. However, the long lower wick does have a bullish implication which means for a hanging man you really need to see the next candlestick as a bearish candlestick before you can have some reasonable confidence in the bearish reversal signal given by a hanging man pattern that makes essentially a hanging man pattern not a one but a two candlestick reversal pattern so we need to see how next week plays out before we can say that this is a bearish candlestick pattern indicating that we may have a high in place. There is a little bit of support from volume for upward movement this week but it does remain quite light but I'm not going to put too much weight on that because for many years now volume has been light and yet prices continue to rise for over 10 years on light and rising and falling volume. On balance volume has made a new high and it's broken above resistance. It's giving us a bullish signal that would tend to support a bullish wave count, the alternate. RSI is in neutral territory. There's plenty of room for price to rise or fall. ADX reached extreme for the previous downward trend. It's now declining, telling us that at this time frame there's no clear trend. It is a lagging indicator. It's based here on a 14-week average. MACD is full bore bullish. ATR declining and moving a bit lower as price is moving sideways and now a bit higher. That's really normal behaviour for this market though. It's neither bullish nor bearish really. Price is essentially range bound with resistance about 3220 or 3225 and support down here about 2960. We need to see a breakout of this range before we can have real confidence in the next trend for this market. We did have a new high this week above this prior high of the 8th of July but not on a closing basis so although we did have a slight new high here we don't have it on a closing basis so it's not an upward breakout above resistance. Resistance still remains intact. And although price made a slight new high, RSI is a fair way off. There is weakness in this upward movement. There is still bearish divergence. That would tend to support a bearish wave count. Volume for the last two sessions is particularly light and the real bodies of these candlesticks are very, very small. This is really weak movement. ADX, sorry, ADX is still below 15. It's too low to have confidence that it's indicating a trend. But if it reaches 15, then this would be the strongest signal ADX could give when it comes up rising from low levels and rises up from below both directional lines. That's telling us that it's a new trend at an early stage. It's a very strong signal. We don't have it yet though. The number for well, waiting until it reads 15 or above rules out some false positive signals. 
ATR is flat, as price is range bound, that's really normal behaviour during a consolidation. On balance volume suggests that we may get an upward breakout. This would support either wave count actually. We may have an upward breakout according to my bearish wave count but it could be short lived. And on balance volume, although it's telling us which direction price may break out, can make no comment on how long the breakout may last. It tells us it's likely we're going to get an upward breakout from this consolidation. Oh, we've already been over RSI. MACD is bullish, full ball bullish, and stochastics is overbought. And so within the consolidation, it would be reasonable to expect an upward swing may end here. We may see a downward swing. What about breadth and volatility? The AD line, the NYSE all issues AD line, has made another all-time high this week. This is a very bullish signal, but the AD line didn't give any signals prior to this bear market. In fact, it told us the bull market back here was most likely to continue, and yet price moved into a bear market. This is technically a bear market because we saw over a 20% reduction in market value meeting the technical definition of a bear market, so that's why I'm calling it a bear market. Usually prior to a bear market there's some bearish divergence between price and the AD line, but the AD line was very bullish back in February 2020, giving us no warning whatsoever of this bear market. And so I'm a little bit suspicious of this signal at the moment. The AD line is again very bullish. If Lowry's operating company's only AD line also makes a new all-time high and it's a fair distance off at the moment, then I would give more weight to this signal. But right now, I'm a bit suspicious of how the AD line's been behaving, for the NYSE all issues anyway. For the shorter term picture, it does tend to be giving more slightly more reliable signals. We've got some bearish divergence here and here. Here the AD line made a new swing low but price didn't make a new swing low. This downward movement in price came with a stronger fall in market breadth. And now this upward movement in price, price has made a slight new high but the AD line at the daily chart level has failed to make a corresponding high. Now this upward movement here in price, the swing within the consolidation, comes with does not come with a corresponding rise in market breadth. Breadth is slightly weaker than price, and so that's bearish divergence. And that would all tend to, at least for the short term, support a bearish wave count. Between price and inverted VIX, there's well over two, I think over two and a half years now, a very, very strong bearish divergence. This would tend to support a bearish wave count. It wasn't useful in timing the beginning of this bear market, but it is telling us at this stage that this bear market is likely to be incomplete. Price has made a slight new high, a short term swing high, above the 8th of July and yet inverted VIX has not. There is also still longer term bearish divergence between price and inverted VIX. And at the daily chart level, there's still this bearish divergence between price and inverted VIX. You can see that also at the weekly chart level. But the very short term, there's some quite strong bullish divergence. Price has moved very slightly higher on Friday. It didn't make a new high above the previous high two sessions ago. But inverted VIX made a really strong new high. This would suggest we may be about to get an upward breakout. I expect it may be short-lived next week though. That's all from me this week with your S&P analysis. I hope that all of our members are having a fabulous weekend and are remaining safe and healthy.